the story begins with a family named Wilkes. At the end of the war, Stephen Wilkes was a youngster, spending the summers with his family on the island of Anglesey in Wales. His father Morris and Uncle Spencer Wilkes were in the car business. My Uncle Spen was the chairman of Rover for many years. He was really instrumental, obviously, in my father actually even being employed there at all. My father, I wouldn't describe my father as a businessman. Not, not really. He was much more of a um, solving technical problems, that type of thing. A man who was full of interest. But there was always this sort of uh, child there. He would be onto one thing and then it would be onto another thing. He always loved making things. He had a, an automatic mowing machine. It consisted of a, uh, a piece of plywood about uh, four foot by three foot. Then there was a motor vehicle back axle that would drive these wheels. Then the mower would go around on a string, and as it went round, of course, it would make the trolley move along. But there was another side to this carefree family life. The year was 1947, and the Wilkes brothers were struggling to keep the Rover car company afloat. Economic conditions after the war were bleak. The automobile industry was particularly hard hit. Steel was in short supply and given only to companies with products to export. That same year, England suffered the worst winter in decades. But it set the stage for Morris Wilkes to develop an idea for a new product that would change the course of history for the Rover Car Company. There was uh, a lot of snow, as I recall, and a great storm that followed after that and uh, floods and the storm blew down lots of trees down the drive so access to the house well you couldn't get there with a motor vehicle and so it was important to my dad to be able to clear these trees as quickly as possible he started using uh, rover cars to pull these trees and things out of the way and uh, found that it wasn't the right type of vehicle for that being into government surplus equipment, he managed to buy a, a surplus brain gun carrier, which is a tracked vehicle. It's a bit like a tank, but a very small one. Morris saw the practicality of the brain gun carrier, but he also realized its obvious limitations. A neighbor, Colonel Nash, owned something which intrigued him even more, a military surplus Willis Jeep. My dad uh, had said to this Colonel Nash, he said, well, uh, how about us doing a trade? Uh, you take my Bren gun carrier and I'll have your Willis Jeep. There's a story my mother tells about when my father came down here with her one day and my uncle's boat came in there and he came over in a dinghy and my father and my uncle sat down on the sand somewhere here and they drew in the sand like this, and they were drawing a picture of the first Land Rover, they were designing it in the sand. So they went to work on a four-wheel drive vehicle that had a rugged box chassis that was much stronger than the Jeeps, and a power takeoff that ran a variety of tools. It became a Land Rover trademark. Because steel was in short supply, they used aluminium for the body panels. It was corrosion resistant, plentiful and cheap vehicle arrived and I remember great discussions as to what it should be called and I think my father actually coined Land Rover. 